for most physics students first learning about electricity and magnetism, understanding how Lenz's law plays into Faraday's law is often the most challenging aspect of this unit of study. So there are quite a few examples out there to try to illustrate Lenz's law. And you've probably already seen what happens when a magnet is dropped through an aluminum tube. And um, you might have even seen how you can produce electric currents in a secondary coil by changing the current in a primary coil. So here's another example on uh, magnetic braking and eddy currents. And the problem goes something like this. If you have a, again, we're going to use aluminum or copper as the material because we don't want any effect between the metal and the magnet to be a direct effect. We want to witness an indirect effect based on Faraday's law. So what if you were to pivot a piece of metal as like a physical pendulum, pull it back some angle, and then let it swing through the space between a dipole magnet. So there'd be magnetic field lines pointing, um, well, this is drawn on a, give it some three-dimensional aspect to it, but if your eyeball was looking in this direction, we'd say you're looking straight into the page, and there'd be magnetic field lines then pointing away from you. So let's draw it like that. Let's say we have a fairly uniform magnetic field, and this represents the magnetic field in this space, in this gap between the north and south magnetic poles as viewed by an observer looking in that direction. But that magnetic field is only confined so far, right? It doesn't exist over here. It doesn't exist over here. That field really only exists in the space between the dipoles. So I'm going to put a box around this. Let's say that. That represents the boundary, the limit of this magnetic field. Let me shrink the picture a little bit to allow room to show the plate that's going to swing there. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now let's say we have a piece of aluminum. And it's pivoted way up here. And it sits out in this direction. Oh, let me draw that a little bigger. There we go. So it sits here outside of that magnetic field, but it was dropped from rest, and it starts to swing, and eventually it's going to follow this curved path, and at some moment it's going to sit inside of this uniform magnetic field. So for now, none of these field lines pass through the cross-sectional area of this aluminum plate, and so there's no flux. But what happens when it swings a little lower? and the front portion of this plate enters the field. Well, that aluminum plate might not interact directly with a magnet, but it's still made out of metal. It's a conductor, and it has free electrons. So let's picture a few of those free electrons. I'll make little purple dots here. There's a few of our free electrons. Well, what's going to happen? They've got a velocity just due to, by virtue of swinging, Right? By virtue of gra uh, converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy, these electrons have a forward velocity, mainly directed to the right. Try the right-hand rule. We know it, um, numerically, quantitatively, the force on those electrons can be calculated as F equals QVB. But more importantly, what's the direction of the force on those electrons? So point your thumb to the right in the direction of this velocity vector and point your fingers into the page in the direction of this external magnetic field. What did you find? Same thing as me, that these electrons would experience a downward force. Well, if electrons are drifting downward, that's identical to having conventional current flow upward. Now let's think about that. That's an induced current, right? It's sort of like motional EMF. And in fact, that's exactly what it is, motional EMF. Remember that? EMF is equal to BLV. So the external magnetic field that induced that current in the first place is now able to exert a force on that induced current. I'm throwing a lot of equations at you here, but this should look familiar. F equals BIL. So as long as you have a current in a magnetic field and there's some length and that current flow basically along that leading edge of the aluminum plate that has a length to it, 
Well, we've got all three of those. There should be some force of interaction. And again, I'm not so interested in the um, quantitative value. I'm interested more qualitatively in what's the direction of that force. So, point your thumb upwards in the direction of the induced conventional current. Point your fingers inward in the direction of the external magnetic field. And I hope you agree with me that a force would appear that points back in this direction. Well, isn't that what Lenz's law says? Doesn't Lenz's law say induced currents are self-defeating? So think about what's going on here. The free electrons in this aluminum plate interacted with the external field and experienced a downward force. We said that's consistent with an induced current that flows upward, but that very induced current now interacts with the magnetic field that induced it in the first place to present a force in the opposite direction. And so that's why we refer to this as magnetic braking. It gets slowed down. And so there's a demonstration in which you uh, take a physical pendulum, and it's in this exact shape. It looks like a little aluminum spatula. And after you're done watching this video, I have a demonstration of this. So after you're done uh, watching this lecture component, watch my demonstration of this magnetic braking. I take one of these aluminum plates, mount it on an axle, and then without any magnet present at all, I just let it swing, and it swings back and forth. And there's a little bit of damping that takes place because there's a tiny amount of uh, friction in the bearing. There's not so much any air resistance, or it's negligible, but there is a little friction at the axle, and so it, it gradually comes to rest, but it's very gradual. And then I repeat it with these magnets, and I think I've got a magnet like maybe there's the south pole of this magnet, and then here's a north pole. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I have a magnetic monopole. This is part of a dipole that's got its north end down here, and this one's south end is over here. But the key is I have north-south this way, so I have magnetic field lines. And as the plate swings in here, there suddenly goes from being no flux to now when the plate sits in this position, there is flux. And so the change in flux from case A to case B induces current, but the induced current interacts with the magnetic field that induced it in the first place in order to slow things down. Okay, so it's a lot like the um, demonstration of the dipole magnet that falls through the aluminum or copper tube gets slowed down as it falls. Let's get into this a little more. Dig deeper here. So, um, as the plate continues to swing, then these currents have to have a complete path, right? The, um, oops. The induced current doesn't just come up here and stop. The current forms a complete loop, and so it goes around like this, okay? So uh, there's an associated magnetic dipole moment that points out in this direction. So think about that. The induced current makes a counterclockwise loop in the aluminum, and then you have magnetic dipole moment. Um, we can either say that's mu, that's the, that's the product of the magnetic field and the area of the plate. Or in any case, if there's magnetic dipole moment, there's just magnetic field pointing. That's supposed to be an arrow that's like out of the page. So look at what that says. The reason that the current was induced in the first place is because more and more magnetic field lines pointing into the page start to pass through the area of this aluminum plate. And so that increasing flux into the page has to be counteracted by some induced magnetism that points out of the page. Now what about the moments when the uh, aluminum plate exits the field? So we've got this same magnetic field that's bounded. It only exists in a small region. And now the plate goes swinging out of here for a moment the plate sits entirely within the field, and whatever flux is in here um, has been there for a while. The plate was here, and then it's here, and so it starts to get used to having this flux pointing into the page. But next thing you know, the plate now exits that field. And so you have these electrons in the 
trailing end of the aluminum plate, and by virtue of being in motion, this whole plate moves with velocity v, these free electrons are moving to the right with a velocity v. Well, F equals QVB tells us how strong the force on those electrons, but the right-hand rule tells us the direction of force on those electrons. So give it a test. Point your fingers in the direction of the external magnetic field, so into the page. Point your thumb to the right in the direction of this velocity vector, and negative charges, electrons, would then get forced downward. So no different than we said earlier, right? Said the same thing here as the leading edge enters the field, the electrons get forced downward. As the trailing edge exits the field, the electrons get forced downward. And downward drift of electrons is consistent with conventional current flowing upward. But now think about this, the current has to form a closed loop. So before, when the current flowed upward in the leading edge, then it had to flow counterclockwise around the loop. Now if the current flows upward in the trailing edge, it flows clockwise around the loop. Now that's going to make magnetic dipole moment. This whole aluminum has an area and then it has a clockwise current, so it has a magnetic dipole moment pointing into the page. Remember, magnetic dipole moment is product of magnetic field and area, so we have induced magnetism pointing into the page. But the external magnetic field is also into the page. So this is a case where the induced magnetic field doesn't point opposite the external field. It points in the direction because it's not trying to cancel it out. It's trying to restore it. Okay, It's trying to bring it back to the steady value that it held for a while until it gets that moment where it's exiting. And it's during the exit that the change takes place. And Lenz's law is telling us that induced current will create induced magnetism in attempt to oppose the change that induced it in the first place. So these currents that flow in circular loops are often referred to as eddy currents. So as this plate first enters the external magnetic field, eddy currents appear in a counterclockwise direction in order to oppose the changing magnetic flux. And as the aluminum plate exits the magnetic field, eddy currents flow in a clockwise direction in order to restore, oppose, restore. But either way, it's all about um, opposing the change that's taking place in the magnetic flux.